here so we can reference it. So our general equation is y equals a x minus h squared plus k. With this equation, you'll notice that there is there's nothing being subtracted from the x. So we have no h value in this case. Okay? So our h is equal to 0. I can write a better equals then than that. h equals 0. Our a value, if we look at the a value, a is what's in front of the h. We have a 1 over 2. So our a value is equal to a half. And our k value, what's being added or subtracted after the x squared, in this case, is positive 4. So our k is equal to 4. Now if we want to say what our vertex is of this parabola, our vertex is hk. So in this case, our h value is 0. Our k value is 4. So there's the vertex. Our axis of symmetry is x equals h, and h in this case is 0. Good. Now if we want to describe the transformations, we can do that because we have the a, h, and k values, and we know exactly what those values do to transform a parabola. So h is 0. It's not moving right or left, so we don't have to bother saying anything about that. A is a half. 1 over 2 is 0 0.5. That's a value between 0 and 1. We know when we have an A value between 0 and 1, it's vertically compressed. Vertically compressed by, whoop, that doesn't look like by, it says by, by a factor. of 1 over 2. Vertically compressed by a factor of 1 over 2. Good. What else is happening to this parabola compared to y equals x squared? k value is 4. We know when k is greater than 0, it shifts it up. So it's being shifted 4 units up. Yay, now we're done the description of the transformation of y equals 1 over 2x squared plus 4 compared to y equals x squared. Just based on this simple equation right here, y equals 1 over 2x squared plus 4, we were able to say the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and describe the transformations without even having to calculate anything. We just know what these values stand for, and therefore we're able to state all of this. Good. Next example y equals negative x minus 2 squared minus 3. We'll do this one a little quicker, okay? So once again, I'll just quickly write out my vertex form. x minus h squared plus k. So now let's figure out what our a, h, and k values are for this equation here. Our a value is negative 1. Our h value is 2. Because if you look at this equation, h has been replaced by 2. And our k value is negative 3. Our vertex is hk. h is 2. k is negative 3. Our axis of symmetry is just x equals h. h is 2. So our axis of symmetry, the vertical line going through the vertex, the equation of that line is x equals 2. Lastly, let's describe the transformations. Let's do that in a different color so it'll look prettier. So describing the transformation, we have a negative a value. So it's going to be reflected in the x-axis. It is going to be shifted two units to the right because our h value is positive two. Therefore, it's moving two units to the right because every time h is greater than zero, it moves to the right. So shifted two units right. 
and it is also shifted three units down. Because we have a negative k value, when k is less than zero, it moves it down by a factor of k, and in this case, our k is negative three. So to summarize, reflect in the x-axis, two units right, three units down. Last example of describing transformations. So if we look at this equation, we have our a value of 3. So we know a is equal to 3. We know that x is equal to negative 20. We know that because if we plug in negative 20 into this standard equation, if we plug in negative 20, x minus, and I plug in negative 20 for h, whoops, I plug in negative 20, where's my mouse, there it is, I plug in negative 20, and I simplify, it appears as x plus 20, and that is in fact what we have in this equation here. So we know our h value is negative 20, and our k value is negative 15. k equals negative 15. Okay, I'm just going to remove this so we have a little more room to work. Good. So now let's state the vertex. The vertex is x equals h. And or so our, our vert sorry, that's our axis symmetry. Our vertex. So erase your mind for what I just said the last five seconds. Good. Okay. Vertex is h comma k. H is negative twenty. K negative fifteen. And yes, I wrote the five before the one, but that's okay. Okay. Vertex h comma k negative twenty comma negative fifteen. Axis of symmetry is x equals h. And our x our uh, our h value is negative twenty. Perfect. Now let's describe the transformation. A value is three. When a is greater than one, it's stretched vertically. So stretched vertically by a factor. of 3. Okay. Our a value isn't negative, so it's not reflected in the x-axis. Also, the parabola is shifted left twenty units and down fifteen because our h value is less than zero, so it's going to move to the left. Our h value in this case is negative 20, so it moves 20 left. k, when less than zero, moves down, so it's going to move down 15. Okay, now let's do an example where we're going to work in the opposite direction. So I'm going to give you the description, and we're going to figure out how we can write the equation based on the description. So. Let's do it in blue. So what the question tells us is there's a vertical compression by a factor of 1 over 5. What value is responsible for vertical compressions? It's the a value. So our a value, it's telling us in this, is 1 over 5. It's also telling us that it's going to shift 3 to the right. So we know to shift to the right, we must have an h value greater than 0. In this case, it's going to be 3. And we're going to go 1 down. So we know in order to go down, the k value must be negative. That's a horrible looking k. So our k value has to be negative if it goes down. So our k value in this case is negative 1. If we remember what our vertex form of a parabola is, it's y equals a x minus h squared plus k. 
we know our a, h, and k values, so let's just plug them all into the formula, and then we have our equation. So a is 1 over 5, x minus h is 3, Oops. h is 3, I just replaced the h with a 3, and our k is minus 1. There is our lovely equation of the parabola in vertex form. Not so bad, right? Okay, two more examples, and then we're done. What if we have a vertical stretch by a factor of, of 6, and we shift left 2 and 3 up? Well, let's figure out what our values are again. A is responsible for our vertical stretch, and it's telling us it's by a factor of 6. So A is 6. H, if we're moving left, we know H has to be less than 0, so our H value is negative 2. K, we're going up 3, so K is positive, so our K value is positive 3. Our vertex form of our equation is Y equals A, X minus H squared plus K. If we plug in all our values, we get Y equals 6 X minus negative 2, this is the important part, squared plus 3. Okay, now we can simplify those two negatives inside the brackets. When we subtract a negative, it's the same as adding. So our final answer here is y equals 6, x plus 2 squared plus 3. All done, there's our equation. Last example. Vertical stretch by a factor of 2, shift down 5. So vertical stretch by a factor of 2, shift down 5. For this one, actually, I decided that we should probably do one where there's a reflection in the x-axis. So I'll add that in here. Reflection in the x-axis. Okay. So the question now reads, vertical stretch by a factor of 2, shift down 5, reflection in the x-axis. Okay. Let's figure out what our values are. Vertical stretch, we know A is responsible for vertical stretches. And it's by a factor of 2. So our A value is 2. But hold on. If we read the end of the question, it says that there's a reflection in the x-axis. That tells us that our A value has to be negative. So our A value in this instance is negative 2. If we're going to shift down 5, K is responsible for vertical translations, and to go down it has to be negative, so our K is negative 5. H, we are not moving, this parabola is not being shifted left or right at all, so our H value is just 0. Let's write it in vertex form, let's write it in Y equals A X minus H squared plus K form, plug in all our values, a is negative 2, H is 0, and K is negative 5. We can simplify that to just read negative 2, X squared, minus 5. But there's no point in writing in subtracting 0, because that doesn't change anything. So our final answer, Y equals negative 2, X squared, minus 5. Not so bad. Here's a little bonus question for you if you want to try that and you know post your answer see what people think about it go ahead just pause the video here and give it a shot and the homework from this lesson was completing the transformations worksheet it was this worksheet right here uh, you guys have all the necessary tools and information to be able to complete this all you have to do is you know describe what the values of the a h and k do um, also sketch some rough graphs. Just make rough sketches on here, just so you can see how the parabolas have, have transformed. And then complete this chart. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please post um, below the video. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to continue with parabolas in vertex form for, for the next two lessons. We're going to learn how to use it to help us graph a parabola um, accurately and also how to determine the equation when we're given the vertex and another point on the problem. Thanks again. See you guys.